Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this video, we'll be looking at uh, using sets to solve some problems. All right, let's get started. So firstly, we have looked at things like nested lists and how that kind of structure can help us uh, store more complex data, things like matrices. Um, so we might wonder, can we create sets of sets? So this can be useful uh, in some scenarios, right? Um, so in that sense, we could try something like, um, where's my editor? Here, uh, uh, run. Um, so from previous video, we already created a set called pets, pets, and we also have farm animals, right? So we can try to create uh, sets of two sets, which includes pets and farm animals uh, as a set. So if we run this, then we get the same error as we expected here, right? So unhashable type set. Well, what do you think the problem is? Yes, that's correct. So sets are mutable, but uh, the items in the set has to be immutable. However, so if you want to put a set inside another set, you have to make sure that items becomes immutable. So how to do sets of lists or sets? Yes, of course. So basically the idea is you convert a mutable object into an immutable object. In sets, that's using what we call a frozen sets, right? So let's create some frozen sets. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, there is a specific built-in function called frozen set, uh, which takes in a set and convert it into an immutable um, set. So once you convert it into an immutable set, that means you can no longer change the content of that set. So if we do something like, uh, uh, copy this, uh, and then create frozen set, uh, like this, same with the other one, fro frozen set, this, and get rid of this, I'm supposed to just comment, and run it, then uh, we see that there's no error, and that means sets are a set of, of two sets, then it shows us that both content of sets uh, frozen set dog gold pig and frozen set gerbil cat dog goldfish, right? So this is um, uh, useful here. So by doing this, what we can do is check um, whether a set uh, is inside this set of sets. So what we can do is create a frozen set to check whether the sets have been stored correctly. So for instance, we can check whether, uh, for example, pets in um, set of two sets. And this is going to return us true because uh, the content of the set is inside our new set. But if we modify the pets, for example, pets.add a, uh, I don't know, what else is there? Hamster, All right? So now we modify the content of the pets. So if we check whether pets is in the sets of two sets, this time is false because now we have modified the set. Uh, now, so it doesn't belong into the set of sets. It doesn't match the content that it has been stored. So this way you can easily check whether the set has been modified or not uh, by creating a list of sets uh, inside another set. And the advantage here is that you can look up whether the set exists and have been modified really quickly uh, by setting something like this. Okay, so that's uh, one way of using a uh, set of sets, sets of sets, all right? So the next item is uh, uh, using sets to process um, some items from uh, files, right? So what we're going to do is uh, we have a file called fruit count. So we're just going to open that up. Okay, so inside fruits, what we have is uh, some header and a bunch of fruits inside, and this is a CSV file. Oh, CSV file. Okay, so every items are separated by comma. And what we want to do is um, 
uh, run this so that we can process uh, these uh, items and chuck it into the set. So for now, we won't worry about the count associated with this file. Uh, we just want to have a list of uh, fruits. So as you can see, we have some uh, uh, reappearing fruits. Uh, we don't want that. We just want a unique list of fruits uh, that is inside our file. Okay. So here you do some file handling. If you are not sure about file, hand file handling, please go and have a look at the file handling videos. Um, and then we're going to create fruit set and go through each one and add it into the fruit that we have. So we already have loaded it. So we just have to call the main, enter the file name, and it's called fruits.csv. Okay. And what it does is uh, go through and and get all the fruit names and put it into my set. So now I have created a set called fruits. Uh, for this one, I'm just printing it, but for other purposes, I can return it or store it somewhere and I can reuse it, right? So it shows me the list. Uh, and again, uh, as mentioned previously, the order uh, will depend on um, the hash function. Uh, and how those values are converted to be used with the hash function. So here I have output, which is different to what I have uh, in my demo right now. However, that is not the big deal. Um, the use of set doesn't really require you to have uh, the order uh, associated with, rather you want to check whether items exist or not, and that can be uh, checked really quickly. All right, so I have some slides of set quizzes. So what you can do here is post this video and try these yourself. And uh, before you run each line, you can guess. Otherwise, uh, now let's go through each one. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, uh, let's uh, restart the shell. So we're not everything else so what we can do is lows equals set range four okay so we just created lows called sets and uh, it, it contains numbers zero to three um, but not including four okay um, print uh, we can do four in low okay then this is false because four wasn't included when we did the range so remember range is up to the number but not including okay so high is equal set uh, range 5 to 10. So now we have created uh, highs ranging from 0 up to 9, uh, but not including 10, right? So we can go 5 in highs. This should be true. Right? Uh, and we can try to add uh, something like uh, loss dot uh, uh, plus equals say five because a curly bracket is a set. However, um, set doesn't have an opera operation for plus. Uh, so you have to use the built-in method of add laws dot add, and then you can pass in the values you want to pass in there. Okay. And we can also check laws dot intersect of five. Oops not five, sorry, highs. And this will return us a set containing value five because now we have inserted five into lows. So it, it belongs to both sets. Um, you can also do lows intersect highs. Oh, wait, that's not it. Ah, the symbol is the end. So lows intersect highs then it's going to show us the same uh, result. So you can use either the operator associated with uh, these methods or the methods uh, by themselves. Okay. Um, we can also look at the symmetric difference. So highs dot symmetric difference, lows. Um, so this, uh, the head symbol was the symmetric difference, uh, which I just used before. So we get the same result as um, two steps before. Okay, uh, we can also do union, lows.union. This is just going to show us um, uh, all the items belong to both sets. Uh, and if you remember, um, union doesn't have a specific operator associated with them. 
uh, associated with this method, therefore you cannot use the plus sign as it has an ambiguity whether it's uh, addition of new items or checking for union. Okay. Now we're going to create uh, a frozen Z because if we try to do something like uh, lows and highs equals lows and highs, this is going to throw an error because lows and highs are mutable and you cannot have mutable objects inside a set. So we can create frozen lows equals frozen set of lows and frozen highs equals frozen set of highs. Okay. Now we have created those frozen sets. Instead of passing in lows and highs, we can pass in frozen lows and frozen highs. And Python is happy with that because now uh, the content of frozen sets that we just created uh, will be fixed and immutable. So if we do something like f lows in low uh, lows and heights, then this should return us true. All right? We haven't changed any content in frozen lows, and we actually can't because it has been frozen. Um, so we can do something like four in lows and highs. This is false because this frozen set contains two sets, right? So now I need to check uh, each set whether 4 belongs in uh, each one rather than this uh, outside set. So this outside set doesn't contain value 4, okay? And if you're trying to modify the frozen sets, um, something like this, then obviously we created this as an immutable type now, therefore you cannot change this, so you're gonna get an error. Frozen set object has no attribute add. Okay, uh, so let's have a quick look what we can do with frozen sets, frozen lows. And if you look, it does have copy difference and a few other operations, but these are all uh, methods that returns us the result of doing applying some operations rather than modifying the content of the set. So all those uh, modification to the set has been removed as soon as you convert them into a frozen set. Okay, and we could also use uh, these sets to remove duplicates. Um, if you don't want to have a duplicate items in your list, we can quickly convert it into a set and convert it back to a list. So, for example, do I have that? No. Um, if I have a, a list with duplicate items, uh, some list equals, uh, say, one, two, 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 three, four, three, four, some numbers, bunch of numbers, and now you can see it has a bunch of duplicates. Uh, I'll run it. So now I have some list uh, loaded here. What we can do is um, make a unique list. Unique list equals, and essentially what it's doing is convert it into a set and convert it back to list. So we can do list set and then pass in a sum list, okay, and enter it, then unique list will contain a list containing unique numbers, okay. So here you can create a function to do this, but you can, uh, just like what I did here, you can just um, compound those two functions together. And so call the set function inside first, and then call the list function outside, and pass in the list that you want to get rid of duplicates, and this will give you a unique list of items. So that's it for this video. Basically, sets uh, is a collection of unordered and distinct items. This allows you to look up quickly of the content, whether it's inside a set or not. And sets will contain a mutable items. Uh, sorry, sets are mutable. However, the content of, of the sets, i.e. the items, uh, cannot be uh, mutable, i.e. they are immutable, okay? And if you do want to create a set of sets, then you will have to use a frozen set function to make convert a set into an immutable object. Then you can put it inside another set. Okay, so these will have a very good use uh, for membership testing, removing duplicates, and general set math. So that's it for this video. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Bye.